Welcome to another edition of Simple Science. This is the segment on Pop Trigger where Darren breaks down some scientific facts about everyday things for you. She's told us what <laughs> marijuana does to us and alcohol, and now she's gonna really kill our buzz and tell us about <laughs> why coffee is not so good for our bodies. So Darren, yeah. take it away. Yeah, so I know that you're a very avid coffee drinker, which is also why I wanted to do this. I'm beginning she, to think How many this cups a day do you usually drink, <laughs> just on, on average? One, I'm just saying, I'm beginning to think this segment is just like a passive aggressive slight against me. Anything Always, Grace does. Anything I do. Yeah. Uh, I drink about four cups of coffee a day. Okay, and wow. and how did it start though? Like, like did you drink four <laughs> cups from the start or did you start with like one? No, actually, I started drinking coffee with you, young lady, when we were Back 18 or 19. We used to walk to Dunkin' Donuts really just to get out of our dorm rooms and stretch our legs. So I would go to <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts probably uh, once every three or four days. Yeah, so like, not often, you just get like one drink, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell you why now you need so much more. Um, but first I'm gonna talk about what it does in the brain um, and how it makes you feel awake. So to understand that, we have to start with um, the neurotransmitter adenosine. And basically what this does, while we're awake, um, the levels of adenosine actually rise in our brains. And, okay. when, they, and when they attach to their adenosine receptors that makes us feel really sleepy and tired. How do they attach their adenosine receptors? Because as, as we've talked about before, receptors are kind of like a lock and it needs a specific shaped key. So adenosine has a specific shape that fits in its receptor. And it's now, just like a chemical in your brain. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so now if you look at this picture, caffeine, and if you look at the pink part of both adenosine and caffeine, mm -hmm. the double ring structure is very, very similar. And it's basically mm -hmm. similar enough so that Caffeine can actually attach to the adenosine receptors, and your brain um, essentially thinks that it's um, <laughs> thinks that it's adenosine, Wait, it's and like, it actually fits in in the receptor. It's like a Trojan horse. Yeah. Yes, it's literally like, ha! Yeah. I am here. I'm going to block <laughs> this receptor. Yeah, it's an imposter. Yeah. Yes, it's an imposter. So while your Sneaky. body actually is really really exhausted, caffeine actually tricks your brain into thinking, I'm good. I'm good to go. Um, but the main thing that caffeine does that gives you that really big energy rise um, is it actually promotes, um, uh, sorry, it actually promotes um, the production of adrenaline, which is why you feel that increased heart rate, the blood gets pumping faster, your eyes dilate. Um, my eyes don't dilate that much. Are you pumped much. right now, Grace? Yeah, well, so I do feel a strong pulse. Yeah, so essentially, <laughs> adrenaline gets you hyped, right? Adrenaline makes you feel really good, makes yeah. you feel like you can do all these things. Uh -huh. um, and that's another thing that caffeine does, is it actually promotes um, the production of that hormone. So why is that bad, though? Because adrenaline, like you just said, makes you feel pumped, makes you get things right. done. Your blood is pumping. You right. feel awesome. Well, the thing that's not so good about it is that in, in addition to the, the promotion of... Um, Adrenaline is that it also promotes the um, non reabsorption of dopamine, which is the feel good um, neurotransmitter in your brain that makes you feel really, really good. So yeah. it makes you want to keep drinking more coffee and more coffee. So, so okay, so basically, it usually your body reabsorbs dopamine like, yeah. all the time. Yep. It's just like always reabsorbing yeah. it. But caffeine blocks that. Yeah, so caffeine blocks that so that you feel good for longer and you're like, oh, this is great. Like, I want to keep drinking more coffee. Um, and not only that, but the half-life of, of caffeine is about six hours. So about six hours after you drink your first cup, you're only feeling half the effects, and you're not feeling as, as, as much of the dopamine effects, so you're wanting to drink more too. So you're basically, your body is confusing caffeine with dopamine almost. Like caffeine is just like... Not necessarily. Um, it's, it's essentially, um, how do I explain this? Um, Basically, it just blocks the reabsorption of, of the dopamines so that it stays in your brain longer. It doesn't really confuse it. It, it can recognize that it's dopamine, but it's not gonna reabsorb it, so you're gonna feel really good uh -huh. um, while you're drinking coffee. But, another but interesting, only while you're drinking coffee. Correct, yeah, okay. correct, yeah. So, so that's, that's yeah, So once you me. stop drinking coffee, um, you, you know, the it dopamine won't be will be reabsorbed. reabsorbed. Yes, yes, oh, so you're not man. just feeling good all the time. Um, but another thing that's really interesting is for people who drink a ton of coffee like Grace, your brain actually makes more adenosine receptors, so it takes a lot more coffee oh, to make you feel awake. Damn. Which is why Grace drinks four <laughs> cups a day. When you started saying that, you're like, your body creates more adenosine receptors. I know, you're I like, like, yeah, hell you're like, yeah. yeah, that's right, all Big these brain. receptors. And then I'm yeah. like, oh man. Yeah, so not only do you need more coffee to basically feel awake, but if you were to try to wean yourself off coffee, because you have more of those receptors in your brain, there's more receptors uh, for the adenosine to 
um, attached to, so you feel a lot more fatigued than you normally would. Is that why you get headaches? Because yes. Because your yes. brain can't. Okay, so basically, I've created. I let's agree. Grace that has I've, created a monster. I've created a, a coffee monster. monster in her brain. I've created too many receptors. So if I were to stop drinking coffee today, you would have major withdrawal symptoms because for like there seven wouldn't to 10 be days. enough keys for the locks, right? Well, um, no, not necessarily. There'd basically be too many locks, <laughs> and they would all be like opened, basically. So, so you'd get a, like a huge. <laughs> Huge, huge wave of exhaustion, and you would feel tired, fatigued, nausea, headache. So <laughs> wean yourself off slowly is Wait, what I'm trying to say. So there are all these keys. Or yeah, there's all these all the locks, all the locks. and they're all filled with keys of, of adenosine <laughs> if you were to stop, right? So it takes about seven to 10 days for your brain to realize that it doesn't need all those receptors yeah. and to basically get back to the normal amount. Of, so of that's the why there's this there, there's this uh, old expression that I guess kind of is a little bit true, yeah. which is that if you want to start or break a habit, it takes about two weeks. And yeah. if, if that is be maybe because it takes about seven to ten days in order for your brain to recalibrate the chemical configuration up there. Yeah, when it comes to caffeine, it's about seven to ten days. But so I wonder I wonder about like with alcohol and marijuana if it's also the same sort of recovery time of like set because I think it is like seven to two weeks that you always say like to break a bad habit. Now obviously Obviously, like extreme withdrawal and like yeah. cleansing is entirely different, but just for your brain to sort of get situated into what's happening. I mean, I'm certainly not going to do that. Just for the <laughs> record, like I'm definitely yeah. not going to be trying this. So why, why does caffeine not make me feel good? It doesn't make me feel that good either, to be honest. And I think it's because the adrenaline, honestly. Mm. It basically like hyperactivates all these different systems in your body. And if you're already, um, if, if you don't drink coffee a lot, then it can kind of, mess up um, you know, the regulation that your body is, is already doing. Like me personally, it makes me not feel very good. It makes me feel a little bit sick. Uh, sometimes I try to drink it if I'm really tired, but I always end up really regretting yeah, it. Yeah, same here, same <laughs> here. I, I have yeah. a competing theory. What? I think that coffee doesn't make you guys feel good because you can't take the adrenaline because you can't take the heat, okay. so you should get out of the kitchen. Okay, great. If you can't understand what, how- Do you go to bed on time ever? Do you even sleep? <laughs> no, she probably doesn't. Four cups? <laughs> and also, I, I have to, Get this in because there actually is a lethal dose of caffeine, Grace. Yeah. Really? Yes, Grace. there is a lethal dose of caffeine. Um, so basically, it's 150 milligrams per um, one kilogram of uh, body weight. So basically, what that means okay. is if you weigh around 154 pounds, which is about 70 kilograms, you would need 70 cups of coffee. So you're well on your way there. <laughs> um, but the thing is, you'd have to drink them all at the same time. So it's technically not physically possible to die from a caffeine. Happens. Yeah. So you'd you'd drown way before that happens. But, that's but like, there's technically, isn't there technically like a lethal dose of water? Like you could, yeah. act, like yeah. in theory, you could drink so much water that you drown yeah. your cells. Yeah. Mm, but if you, if, what you're saying, if you got like raw caffeine in yeah. a pill, you could take that and die. Yeah, essentially, if, if you had enough caffeine in one dose, you would not last. But you know what, <laughs> it would be like a thrilling death. Well, just it, it so may, yeah, amped. no, you would literally start having hallucinations, mania, um, which maybe you already are yeah, experiencing with are the level of coffee that you sweet. intake. <laughs> um, what I will say is yeah. actually my new goal, I will I will quit coffee as soon as I experience a caffeine hallucination. Well, That's you're, gonna be Like wild. I said, you're well on your way to that point. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> Darren, thank you so much for teaching us uh, more than I ever wanted to know yeah. about uh, coffee. Anytime. I'm gonna send this segment to my mom because just is so she, you know. Is she coffee drinking? Yeah, I get it from her, it's oh, hereditary. Yeah. My mom roasts. <laughs> me every time she comes over because she's like, I guess you don't like strong coffee. I'm like, mom, it is so Damn. strong. She's the problem, uh, which is what I want <laughs> to leave you guys with. Thank you so much for watching Pop Trigger. This has been the Wednesday Pop Trigger edition. We'll see you next time.